Hey, welcome to the shop. Today I'm gonna to show you how to dial in the settings on your MIG welder. And we're gonna do this in a systematic way, breaking it down into three easy steps. So you're not gonna to have to spend hours turning knobs. Now before we get into those three steps, there's a few fundamentals that we need to cover. First of all, is what the main settings are. Now, a lot of modern MIG welders have a whole myriad of settings, many things that you can adjust and fiddle with, and that might be great long term. You can kind of dial in some of those things like inductance or maybe your run in speed. But the main two settings that we're gonna focus on that are most important are your wire feed speed and your voltage. And you'll find knobs for those on just about any MIG welding machine. Now, on a machine like this HTP MIG welder, it's a Pro Pulse that I'm using here today. It's a great machine and it actually will set your parameters for you based on material thickness. And there's lots of other brands, the higher end machines, that will do this. Now this is a really nice feature and I use it a lot, but without understanding how to set them, you don't really know how to dial that in and make it work for your process. Also, when you go somewhere else, you need to use a machine that doesn't have that feature, you're good to go because you know how to walk through this process and understand what the knobs actually do. Last of all, I just think it's important to talk about technique. Now, nobody likes to hear that it's your actual technique that's the problem and not settings, but that's often been the case when I've helped people in person that they're turning knobs think and that's the issue, but it comes down to technique. The three main things, how long is your stick out? You know, how far is your gun away from your work piece? Is your angle getting out of whack? Are you not moving smoothly? Those types of things, no matter what your settings are, if you don't have that dialed in, you're not gonna be happy with your results. So I'll post a video in the description there. I'll put a link to it. That's gonna help you with some of those issues. Now let's get on to setting the machine. Those three simple steps I was talking about. Step one is selecting a baseline wire feed speed. The way I like to do it, I set wire feed speed first and then I set voltage after. So you need to select a baseline. Where can you get that number? Well, you can get it off of a chart that you might find inside the lid of your machine if you take a look, and it'll show usually your material thickness, which is the most important thing dialing into this, as well as your MIG wire size, which also is very important to selecting this baseline wire feed speed. Other places you might find it, there's some calculators online, or you can actually calculate it. There's two different methods in this book that Miller put out, and I did all that math for you in this chart here, and you can see there's a range there because of those two different methods, and so you can use this to set your machine. Now, you might be thinking, wait a second, my machine doesn't read out in inches per minute or meters per minute. I just have a knob that goes like one to 10. Well, it's pretty easy to get around that. All you need to do is set your machine maybe halfway, hold the trigger down, time for six seconds, and then measure how much wire came out in six seconds, and then multiply that number by 10. So if I had 30 inches come out over the course of that six seconds, I'll multiply that by 10, and that's gonna be about 300 inches per minute. And then, you know, you might do the same thing with the setting maxed out, and maybe that comes out about 500, and so you can know right around in that range, pretty close to where you need to be. Again, this doesn't need to be exact, this is just getting us in the ballpark, and then we're gonna dial it in from there, but you gotta pick something that's kind of in the range. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, these are based on theory, and I've worked with people who've run quite a bit higher and quite a bit lower than these ranges, and also thicker material than these would recommend with great success. So, you know, don't feel bound to this, but it does give you a good starting point. Before we move on to set our voltage, I'm just gonna mention a few things that might influence whether you'll be on the high end or the low end of that range. One of them is the position you're welding in, right? If you're gonna be welding vertically up, you're probably gonna to wanna to run on the lower end of the range of that wire feed speed so that you can maintain better control. Also, the type of joint that you're welding, right? If you're gonna be welding an outside corner joint, you're probably gonna to wanna to run lower in that range than you would if you're gonna be running something like a T-joint with a fillet weld. So those are some things to keep in mind as you select those parameters. So for this example, I'm gonna be using one eighth of an inch thick or right around three millimeter thick steel plate, and I'm going to be using 30 thousandths of an inch diameter MIG wire. And based on my experience and some of the calculations in this chart, I'm gonna go ahead and lock in at 300 inches per minute to start. All right, now that we've picked a baseline wire feed speed, let's move on to step two, and that is dialing in our voltage. Now, before we actually set our voltage, let's talk about some of the fundamentals, what's actually going on down here at the arc. 
we have something that's called a transfer mode. This is a critical concept to understand if you're gonna be able to set your voltage you know, really quickly and intuitively. So a transfer mode is a description of how metal gets from your MIG wire down onto your actual part. Now that can happen a number of different ways and describing those is a topic for another video. If you wanna know about that, let me know down in the description and we can make a video all about just that. But today we're gonna to focus in on short circuit transfer mode, right? It's also called the dip transfer mode in other parts of the world, but basically what happens is the wire will feed out, it'll actually run into your part, that creates a short circuit, right? That's gonna heat it up and burn it back creating an arc and that arc's gonna burn back until the voltage can no longer sustain that arc and it'll go out. Then the wire will feed in and do that over and over again. And this is happening multiple times a second, which is really pretty cool when you think about it. So you might be wondering, okay, what do I care about all that? You know, how that uh, short circuit cycle works. Well, having your voltage set to the right level for a particular wire feed speed is what makes that work smoothly and efficiently, right? And so if it's too low, you see it's just jamming in here and it makes kind of a machine gun sound, you know, just stubbing out. And on the other side, if it's too high, that arc's burning back too far. It's erratic, hard to control, and I get a lot of spatter. So that's what's critical. And once you understand that, then you can get into actually dialing it in. And the way I like to do this is start a little bit low, run a test weld, move it up half a volt, run another test weld, and work my way up like that. Now I know from experience that this is gonna run somewhere between 18 and 19 volts. For my example here, um, because I run this thickness of material a whole lot. So I'm gonna start here at 17 and a half volts, just turn it up half a volt at a time, and then you can watch and see the difference in how it runs. And I'm gonna keep going until I overshoot and go too high. And that's what I recommend doing for you, right? You can see that it'll be a little bit too short in those short circuit cycles, and then it'll work up to where things are running pretty smooth. Your spatter is minimized, though you'll never get rid of all of it with short circuit MIG, and then it'll get to be too long. Okay, so hopefully you could see the difference as I was running those different voltage settings and landed on something pretty good right there in the middle of the range that we looked in. And that's what you need to do to get something running really well. And that brings us into step three. Now step three is testing to see if we had the right wire feed speed to begin with for our particular application now that we got everything running really well and then just fine tuning that a little bit. Now the way to do that is just to run on some scrap metal or a test piece that's as close to what you're actually gonna be welding as possible. Ideally it's the same thickness, joint configuration and position, but even if all you have is some flat material on the bench, it'll give you a pretty good idea. Now let's take a look at something that's too low. Here with the wire feed speed and voltage too low, you can see as I run along, it's just kind of heaped up on top and not melting down in. When we look after, that's not something that I want. Now I'm gonna turn it up to the right level, you know, those parameters that we dialed in here. You can see that ran really well, and based on the bead appearance, I can feel pretty confident that it burned down in and penetrated into the material. Now you can see when it's up too high, it's a little bit difficult for me to keep up with. I'm getting a wider weld pool, and I risk burning through my material. So you can kind of look for those signs as you weld. If you need to turn it down a little, just turn down that wire feed speed and you know the voltage is gonna to have to go lower and now you know how to dial it in quickly. On the flip side, if it needs to go up a little bit, just give yourself a little bit more wire and then work your way up with the voltage till it's running well and you're all set to go, ready to run on your project. Hey, well, if you learned something here or liked this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below and be sure to check out the comments. See if there's some questions down there that you can help others with. Or if you have questions yourself, go ahead and throw them down there. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.